Basicallyhelping.org is fighting for our water. It's investigating the truth. It's exposing the truth with video proof. This isn't about John Bolenbaugh. This is about you and you and you, all of you that are here today. This is about all of you. And that's what I'm fighting for. That's why I'm risking my life for this. If you guys don't stop harassing people, you're going to have issues. I'm putting this on TV. Your kids and grandkids are going to know what you've done. Go ahead and ignore the cameras. But I saw you documenting. See those cameras right there? Binoculars? They're mercenaries. They're hired by these oil companies to harass Indians and to beat them down and to sick dogs after them. Shame on you. As I said, I used to work for them. I'm, I'm disgraced that I used to work for them. Do you guys know that the money's not worth it? Do you know we got seven kids with leukemia in my local high school? We have hundreds of sick people with cancer right now, all because of Enbridge. I quit working for them because they poisoned my community with a million gallons of oil in my river, killed 40 miles of fish. We have hundreds and hundreds of sick people. Go to helpa.org and watch it, or Enbridge Lies and watch the video. Sand oil, and I, I just can't believe that it's going through my property. I just, I am so glad John's got, you know, somebody is doing something about this. I, it just makes me ill. I had to push her in front of the camera. <laughs> she <laughs> she didn't want to do this. What's going to happen to you? Who knows? Hopefully I'm in heaven. <laughs> yeah, you will because the Enbridge will have you killed by then. Hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil leak from a ruptured oil pipeline into the Kalamazoo River. This is a crisis that uh, should have been prevented. It was created because of negligence by Enbridge. Originally, Enbridge told us that 819,000 gallons of oil spilled into the Kalamazoo River. Today, the EPA said 1.1 million gallons has been cleaned up and there's still more out there. Oh, that, that company has had a number of spills in recent years. Earlier this year in North Dakota, there was an Enbridge leak of some 126,000 gallons. There were two major spills in Wisconsin in 2007. A dozen leaks in Michigan alone. Another mess on a, a few fronts here for it's Enbridge. It's happened again. This time, it's in Illinois. Another mess for Enbridge. Tonight, our I-Team takes on accusations of an Enbridge cover-up. Last July, a pipeline owned by Enbridge ruptured in Marshall sending hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil into West Michigan's waterways. Now a former Enbridge employee is blowing the whistle on the company, accusing it 
of covering up oil. One former worker is doing everything possible to get his story out there. They were trying to meet deadlines. So what they would tell us to do is take dirt, put it over the top of the oil. They were telling us to take mud with uh, oil and throw it into the woods. They were telling us to rake dirt over the top of oil. And he says because he wouldn't do those things, he was fired in October after two months on cleanup operations. But Bolenbaugh believes the so-called smoking gun is near Tomage Creek in Ground Zero in Marshall. As I just wanted to prove that this is, ugh, ugh, this is all oil. It is all oil. This is not mud. Mud will freeze. No, that is not oil. That, that's sediment. It's mud. And that's what he's standing in is mud. Yeah. The whole thing. It's all oil. See this? They put this over this entire area. It's all canvas. They plant grass underneath of it. The grass will pop through. This is all oil. I don't like doing this. Jeez. But the only way I'm going to get people's attention is to do this. Think if you were a kid. Think if you were a kid playing right now and you fell in that. A little kid out here by yourself. You'd be done. You'd be, you'd be stuck and you'd die. This is sand. Alright. See there's no sheen. The reason why that's important is because when I dig down, the oil is underneath the sand. Coming up, it's under the sand. It's not in the sand, it's under the sand that they put there. In massive amounts. That's disgusting. Full of oil. That's why EPA is making Enbridge redredge this because kids are swallowing drops of this oil, and the MSDS sheet specifically says it can kill you, cause seizures, coma, liver damage, kidney damage, on and on leukemia, cancer. Do you want your fish to have this? Do you want your kids to have this in their body? that's clean? You, no, you stink like oil too. It, like it's, it reeks of oil as makes, soon as you walked out of there. Makes you want to puke. NPR, National Public Radio. Uh, CTV News in Vancouver. And this is what you're going to see float to the surface. You can see this sheen with the naked eye, even droplets of oil that are floating in the water all around us. Film crew from New York and just showing them Tarsian oil still in the river. We're just, uh, these are reporters from New York okay. from different parts of the country. They came here. You're not recording me, correct? I am recording you. You need to turn that off. No, he don't. By law, he don't. No, he don't. By law, you don't. By law. I, no, I, I know what I, I know my rights. You don't, He's a reporter. If you me. want to make him look bad I'm, I'm or you look bad, you, he has I'm a right. To, yeah. Okay. All right. We just found out today the EPA has found new pockets of oil that was kind of hiding along the river, if you will, 200 acres worth. I mean, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of acres. They buried all this oil, and now because of my videos, they're redigging it out. So, and I knew that, and I can see beyond the smoke screen for the most part, and that's when I knew that you were being genuine, uh, that you were really trying to hold these people accountable. And so, I would say absolutely, you and all the all of the people that have actually supported you along the journey um, have a big part to play in causing them to now come back and get this thing right. You know, so that also lets me know that if it was clean to begin with, then why are you being asked to come back and clean it again right. if it was clean as you suppose, you know? And so hopefully, hopefully the public now is at a place where they now understand that, okay, John was telling the doggone truth. What are some of your symptoms that you had after um, the oil spell? I had uh, three seizures at the other house and two seizures where I live now. And then my son actually had a. Uh an episode where he looked like he was having seizures, passing out. I even took him to the ER. I got migraines. I had a seizure for the first time in my life. Just this is why we have to stop Embridge 
and these oil companies from doing this. They're having seizures and there's, they're getting sick from this tar sand oil. Please help us. So he got leukemia after the oil spill? Yes. I think it's possible that we could have dozens of leukemia cases because of the oil spill. I've worked um, the last winter in one of the local high schools, Marshall High School, and there's like 900 students in the whole school. I've seen five different names of kids, elementary school level and junior high level, that they were talking about how they had leukemia. My personal opinion, I never had this problem until that spill. When I get a sudden burning in my throat, I get the worst case of heartburn in the world. Never had it in my life. Never. They were sick like I was. Getting sick, puking because of that smell off the road. I mean, this was bad. I heard, I heard it explain. It was so bad. It was, it was, you could not, man, I don't even know how I, I'm, I mean, it was, it's like three weeks of just puking in a buck and migraine headaches and sick as a dog, just like a dog who couldn't eat. I had an MRI, a CAT scan, an EEG. And why? Before the oil spill, I've never had the migraines, headaches, or dizzy spells. Since then, um, they, I get them all the time with migraines and I get dizzy, just not even doing anything. Like they're able to do jumping jacks, they're able to do all of these exercises in gym that I'm, can't, I just can't do because of the oil spill. Enbridge has no integrity and no character and they should be out of business. Right after the oil spill, all along the ground here, there were dead birds. Tell me about that. Well, it, it just was a sickening smell. We had a little dog that he started vomiting. We had at the time about 50 chickens, and I lost 30 of them in the first two days. Because my livelihood has been destroyed. It ain't like it's going to be right. You know, they saying everything is okay and all that. I had people on the oil spill tell me it'll be 20 years from now and you still see oil traces and stuff of this oil spill. That river won't be clean for another 20 or 30 years, if it be clean then. And they around here talking about the river's clean, you can eat fish out of there. Well, we proved that you can't eat fish out of there. We caught these fish with all these tumors on them. Kalamazoo River, 21 miles away from where the spill is. We're right over by Clark Road Bridge. This is what they're telling you, everybody. It makes me sick to my stomach. Eat safe fish from the Kalamazoo River. Fish are part of a healthy diet. Yeah, that, that's, no, that's, that's oil right that's there. That's oil good right one. there. Yeah, good that's one. a good one. We actually did. Damn, I didn't see that. I mean, come on, that's all oil. That's yeah. not how they look. No, they're usually pretty white. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, I'd have still been eating them to this day because they said it was okay for us to eat. Bullshit. This here is contaminated, full of oil. All through there, you can see how it's completely black. Then here we have a catfish. It's got a tumor right in over here. Oil spots everywhere. Tumor? Yeah. Right there's a tumor. She was in perfect health all her life. She's such a good dog. Nice, cute dachshund. And once they said the spill was cleaned up already, uh, I let her swim and drink and everything uh, out of the river like she always did before. And now we have this massive tumor on her chest. Oh my God. And he died of a seizure in the house. Three days before she died from cancer. All right. You know, I got two in one week at Christmas. Respiratory problems. He's been on nebulizer treatments That's since huge. he was a baby. You got balls. <laughs> Why do I have balls? to take somebody on that day. You got all them videos to prove it. I still think that that shit had something to do with this. I don't care what they say, I still think it does. What's your fucking killed how many people here? It's killed how many people here? It has actually killed over 14 fucking people here. Do you think people are faking it? That's what I want to know. Do I think people are faking being sick? I don't see how you can fake dying. I mean, I don't, you're not going to fake that. And 
I mean, I know I'm not faking my headache. No, I have a tumor in my spine, and they found multiple cysts in both my lungs, and... And they weren't there before the spill? No. After the oil spill, you had a miscarriage? Yes. And you said it was? It was bad. I almost ended up dying. My liver, spleen, pancreas, uterus, and gallbladder had gotten infected, and the hospital told me if I had gotten there six hours later, I probably would have been dead. It was like exorcist vomiting. And when did this happen? Shortly after the oil spill, a couple of days after. But I've heard rumors that other people have lost their kids due to the oil spill too. What company are you so mad at? Embridge themselves. I don't understand. Everybody thinks, Ember says that they're doing a great job. Yeah, they're doing a great job at covering up. You know, and they're saying it's not dangerous. Why are we still getting sick? And they won't give me answers. Oh, it's clean, it's safe, it's this, it's that. Live here then. Tell me it's clean and it's safe. The, the oil and gas industry, the dishonesty that these people uh, possess and the and the things that they do that are detrimental to communities is almost beyond belief and they have no uh, compassion whatsoever they have no honesty they have no pride and they uh, they're worried about the bottom line the bottom line is the bottom line what's your opinion about the media uh, with the Battle Creek spell what media I mean it's they've totally neglected the whole reporting of it I don't think they're being honest about it I don't think that they're caring enough they're not doing any research they're not coming out no media's come to talk to anyone around my neighborhood that i know of and we're right at the river and i actually puked so hard i detached my aorta off my stomach i had three pints of blood that built up into my stomach to where i almost bled to death as a result of it my opinion ember doyle epa the health department they're all nothing but human terrorists yep you want to put it bluntly they don't care about human life one bit We've got other people that are sick. My my granddaughter, my daughter, there's I have two people in my living room that are sick right now from it and you guys don't even care. It just makes me sick. Something's gonna be done about it and justice will be served and I will make sure of it one way or another. I don't care if I get any money or not, but justice will be they served. They don't care. You know, and you're about the only person I have seen on 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 YouTube or any on television that even gives a damn about us. There's nobody that gives anybody but you. That's about all one I've seen. They told seen. you to cover up the oil. Yeah. They didn't tell you to clean it up. They told you to cover it up, plant grass over it. Yes. You just mentioned about another reason why you didn't report the oil cover up when, when I did. Why didn't you? Well, you know, at the time, obviously, I needed my job. I was still working. But I had also heard, you know, about death threats and stuff being made. And wasn't so much just to protect myself but you know I have kids that if for some reason because I spoke up they decide they want to make my ass disappear then my kids lose their father so that's the only reason I didn't well isn't that like in the movies I mean all that's all a conspiracy and made up stuff or do you believe that could really happen oh I know it could happen and why do you believe that you know it's a uh, the old saying squeaky wheel gets the grease well in this case they would just make the squeaky wheel disappear instead of fixing it do you believe i'm a squeaky wheel for umbridge you're more than a squeaky wheel you're a locomotive that just won't go away in their eyes a michigan man is on a mission in arkansas urging people affected by oil spills to demand oil companies Come clean with neighbors. KRK Force Dustin Barnes spoke to this whistleblower in Mayflower where some families are really still grappling with the fact they may never move back into their homes. Dustin. That's right, Brittany. John Bolenbaugh has lived through an oil spill. In fact, he was part of the cleanup crew sent to clean up after a pipeline rupture that spilled into the Kalamazoo River back in 2010. He tells me he was fired from that job because he spoke out against the oil company's deceiving practices. Been traveling all over. When John Bolenbaugh goes to a town, he wants everyone to know he's there. The victims of the oil spill, and yes, even the oil companies responsible for it. Bolenbaugh hopes his message stops the covering up, but exposes so these folks can live in peace again. If you pull me over or harass me, I've already contacted the Attorney General. 
Don't, don't you dare harass me. I will file a lawsuit against you, personally. Go. Leave me alone and stop harassing me. If you won't talk to me, don't harass me. I think what you've done was a great deed to the community. You saved, you probably saved many lives. I know we've lost a lot of lives because of this. Um, but you saved, if you saved at least one, it was all worth it. Well, I think you're, you know, you're gutsy. You're really hanging it out there in your own community. I've, you've been through uh, quite a bit just to tell people what's going on and you're making some very powerful people very angry. Um, at great personal risk to yourself. Um, <clears throat> I think you believe in what you're doing and you're trying to help your community, so I commend you for that. You drew a line in the sand against a very big enemy. You're the Alamo up against the Mexican army. Now, hopefully you don't have the same outcome. But you also can't undo what you started. You can't walk away from it because that's how, they're not going to go, well, George will be quiet for a while and then it'll go away. It's not like you can quit halfway into the game. There's nothing like a nice day in the hot tub right next to your tar sand and bridge pipeline. Why do you and your wife argue about this? Just because it causes a lot of stress for me and I causes a lot of tension and I'm angry about it and she doesn't see it, comes home and we argue because I'm under the stress of listening to this all day long. I mean, I could leave, but at the same time I've got the risk of all this dirt crumbling away from our house and our whole foundation's exposed. That's how close they are. Just trying to stay the course and try to stay sane through all this. I mean, you're seeing a couple minutes of this on video, but this has been six months of this, and it's hard to explain to people how this affects you every day. I don't know what more to say. They're just, I mean, this is just, this is so crazy. You have no control over what's going on in your life, and your, your land and everything is just being devastated behind you, and you see your your everything diminished that you're working for. And I know that there's people that have it much worse than us. I know that. But this is just, this is not right. Everybody who comes here says that this is not right. You don't have to be a professional. It's an easy way to see right and wrong. And this is not right. I'm fighting back tears right now. You have no idea how upsetting this is. I did not want to come here and talk about this today. Darn them for what they put me through and the, and the other workers, you know? Because seriously, if, this, if, if somebody like him wasn't out there doing what he did, they would have been gone the first year, maybe the two years. This was not a plan that was going to go on this long. They were forced to come back and do more. You're talking about the him being Mr. Bowling Mr. Bowling Ball. My question earlier, though, was I understand that you're... But seriously, we all should have. Most of the people... in John, John, at one point, when we were out there, he looked at me when, when, when that guy said what he said. He goes, Kevin, you live here, too. You're going to tell me that this doesn't... I said, yeah, it bothers me, but I may... I said, I don't know, John. I don't know what to say. I was I, That was an emotional stress for me. What do I do? Do I do the right thing, or do I make that money I need to make to take care of bills and family and stuff? It was like, what was the point of us even being out there? Oh, I know, to make $22 an hour. How much, and you know, and, and be honest with you, if I had to do all over again, I would have quit. I wouldn't have won any part of this. Because I, I could I could imagine, because John would dug into this deeper. And I know this goes on all the time. This is just big money, big corporation. You know, this ain't the first place that's ever happened. But this is my hometown. You know, this is where my kids live and where my cousins and, and my father and mother grew up and you know and I I was quite the outdoorsman growing up you know we never had to worry about this stuff before move to strike all the testimony that violates the court's orders well we were talking about emotional right emotional yeah. stress that's yeah I'm emotionally stressed I, I can't even imagine what he's been through out there trying to get all this out to the public and and not and not turning his back on it like a lot of us did. Move you're, to strike testimony. You're talking about him being John Bolenball. John Bolenball. 
I'm sorry, I think we need John Bowling Balls in this world because obviously Kevin Jacobs didn't step up and I live here and there's a whole bunch of other people that worked on this river crew that lives here. And it's sad that we all did the same thing that Enbridge is doing. It's all about the dollar. Can you tell us what your job is? I'm a police officer. It, all it does is hurt the environment and last time I checked there's only one world. There's only one earth and once we screw that up we're all done we can't make another one they're, they're you know they're not making another earth they're not making another planet for us to go to so if they want to keep screwing it up and keep screwing it up all it's going to do is hurt our children's children's children why do they want to keep me away from the river because they don't want whistleblowers they, they they don't want nobody to know what they're doing or what they're not doing or what they should be doing and they're not doing they just they don't want people to know they want to basically try to sweep it under the rug and, you know, forget about it. Because they don't care. So that's when I started doing my research and, you know, really paying attention to what's going on. I have a friend on the front lines and um, it, it's, it's pretty severe, but the whole reason I got involved was because of you. Hello, my name is John Bolenball. I'm called a whistleblower and I've been documenting oil spills for the last six years. An oil spill happened in my backyard and I lived right next to the river, Kalamazoo River. 2010, there was a huge spill. I actually used to work for oil companies. I was actually appointed to be the yard boss by Enbridge. And then I became an oil cleanup worker and I saw one of the largest cover-ups, if not the largest in United States history. My videos and my exposing what they covered up has cost them over a billion dollars in re-cleanup, and advertising to go against my videos because my videos are so damaging to the oil industry. If you've ever seen Gasland with Josh Fox, that actually sparked a movement against fracking. My videos have sparked a movement against tar sands and they've changed many people's lives. I've had so many people come up to me crying saying, the reason I'm in Standing Rock is because of you, John. The reason I'm fighting oil pipelines is because of your videos, John. I had no idea how bad it was. We have hundreds of sick people in my community. We have several kids with leukemia in my local school system. It is bad. Tumors in the animals. My dog died. My uncle died. My daughter was born with a deformity. My kidney is affected now because of the chemicals I breathed in from the oil spill. It's not necessarily the oil that poisons you, it's the chemicals that thin it out. And so I've been going against Enbridge for a while. This here is just some of the court documents. This here is just a little more. And this here is just a little more. I mean, this is what I do. And I really need good camera equipment. So I'm going back out to Standing Rock tomorrow. Uh, I just bought um, new lens, new flash, a Mark IV. I have a drone. Uh, I have a 4K video camera and a GoPro and I'm just doing anything I can. I'm taking my camper out and I'm just trying to make a difference in this world. Please donate. Every $50 that you donate to me is going to go towards a documentary, a four hour documentary, maybe even five now with Standing Rock, the footage that I have. Please understand that every $50 that you donate will at least cost these oil companies in the future over $50,000. I'm serious. It's that damaging. It's going to save lives. It is that important. I beg of you to help me. I, I don't do this for the money, but I've went six years without asking for donations. And people at Standing Rock are, are telling me, John, you have to make this documentary now. We need your help. We need that information out there. I'm begging you to help me help you. I have to hire people to help me. There's just no other way around it. I can't do this by myself. I gathered over 3,000 gigabytes of footage and I just can't edit it myself. I need your help, your financial help. And I'm going to hire professionals and it's going to be free. We are not, um, this will not be on HBO, it will not be on Netflix. It is going to be free for the world to see. I promise you that. I am not in this for the money.
but I do have to pay my bills. And I quit my job recently just so I can do this because it's that important. So please understand that I'm here for you, but please be here for me so I can help you. Thank you and God bless.